Hey, and welcome to Dirty Lazy Girl, a podcast that offers realistic girlfriend support and problem solving for imperfect people. You don't have to be perfect to be successful. Every week, we'll give you unconventional, dirty, or lazy problem solving strategies. Let's get started. Stephanie, when our hormones are out of whack, which all of us have experienced just by being a woman, <laughs> right? Every month. Um, but yeah, <laughs> do tell. And you can experience all kinds of stuff. And we all have from, you know, mood swings, back pain, acne breakouts, trouble sleeping. And that's, you know, maybe it's post-pregnancy or post-menopausal or whatever. Throughout our life, we're, we're dealing with this stuff. Sometimes for some women, a lot in painful ways. So we know everyone in our audience has experienced some level of this, and I don't necessarily have the cure for things, these things. I don't think there is a total cure for like, some of it. Yeah, it's just totally normal part of being a woman. But I do think there's some common sense, dirty, lazy girl things we can do to kind of quiet down the hormone symptoms and the hormone imbalance symptoms. Well, Tamara, I just love how open you've been about dealing with menopause and some of the hormonal struggles that you've had. Um, and I'm sure our listeners can really relate to some of the strategies that you've come up with, because I know you've been doing a lot of research, trying to figure stuff out. You're my, you're my sociology researcher. <laughs> so I always appreciate, about, I appreciate that about you. And I think our listeners are really going to benefit from that today. So if it's okay with you, Tamara, I want to kind of pick your brain a little bit and maybe even interview you about some of the things that you've learned. Awesome. Although I'm, I'll just say I'm not an expert in this. I mean, I'm not a doctor, um, but I have gone through a lot of hormones up and down. <laughs> so, and I've tried different things, some with success and some not. So yeah, I'm happy to share that. Um, but first, Stephanie, why don't we take a quick break? Awesome. Well, thanks, Tamara. Today's episode is sponsored by the Dirty Lazy Keto Dirt Cheap Cookbook. And just as a reminder, in each of the Dirty Lazy Keto books, my goal is to help chip away at all the common excuses that people use or think to themselves as to why they can't lose weight. You know, I often hear keto is too complicated, it's too expensive, it takes too much time. I have heard it all. So the Dirty Lazy Keto Dirt Cheap Cookbook is here to help, especially when it's too expensive might be your excuse. There's a hundred easy to make fast recipes using affordable everyday ingredients. You can order your copy today on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or in stores like Target.com, or using links from my website at dirtylazyketo.com forward slash books. Thanks, Stephanie. <clears throat> Let's get started. I've got six tips for our listeners today, and I'm excited that you're going to, I guess, interview me. <laughs> That's right. You're in the hot seat. Wow. <laughs> I'm a little scared about that. <laughs> Um, but first, we should say a little disclaimer, neither of us are doctors, so don't replace our advice with a doctor's advice. Always. Well, Tamara, I want to start with food, because yeah. food for me is like <laughs> my favorite topic. I think it might yeah. be yours. It seems to be one of the ones we talk about all the time. Yeah. Uh, but Tamara, I want to ask just the most obvious question, because yeah. I know most of our listeners hear a lot about avoiding foods with sugar. Can yeah. you tell me, is that related to hormones from what you've learned? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, from everything I've seen, sugar, um, it, it may not cause, well, actually it can cause hormone imbalances. It may not explain your particular hormone imbalance. It may just be part of your regular, say, menstrual cycle, but it can aggravate uh, hormonal symptoms. Mm. So yeah, stay away from sugar. And the great thing about Dirty Lazy Keto is that you're already doing that. <laughs> if you're on Dirty Lazy Keto, you've already way reduced your sugar. And I think um, there's, well, one of the evidence that shows that sugar affects your, you know, your hormones is that a lot of people who start Dirty Lazy Keto will feel some weird hormonal imbalances in the beginning only because their body's like, whoa, no sugar? <laughs> And then you'll f feel some funkiness in the beginning, right? I hear you. I mean, I think yeah. people experience a whole different, you know, realm of reactions mm -hmm. when they cut sugar. But mm -hmm. my question for you, Tamara, mm -hmm. is that easier said than done to yeah, just cut true. sugar from the diet? Yeah, it is hard. I mean, and especially like, like me, when I'm hormonal, that's actually when I'm craving sugar the most. I'm wanting my chocolate, right? So it's a challenge. 
Um, what I love about Dirty Lazy Keto is that it's not so snobby that we can still enjoy sweet things. You know, we can have some Splenda flavored Kool-Aid or pudding or, you know, whatever, Jello, and that will help with the, you know, the junk food craving, cravings. I think that's one of the problems with the strict keto is that when you, when you are having those hormonal cravings, there's nothing you can do about it. Whereas with dirty, lazy keto, you can come up with some sugar substitute. But yeah, I mean, we all know cutting out sugar isn't easy. What's helped me a lot is the chaffles. <laughs> I've become such a fan. Not a chaffle. <laughs> yeah, not chaffle, but chaffle. <laughs> Again, we don't care. We're not snobby about that well, word. Why is the chaffle or chaffle helpful for you? Well, for me, it feels like a sweet dessert. Like it's almost like a cake or, you know, a pancake or waffle with, with syrup. It feels so indulgent, like something you shouldn't be eating. And maybe on strict keto, you couldn't. But with dirty, lazy keto, you can. And so it, it so when I'm, when I need sugar, but I know I need to keep down the sugar because of, you know, that just aggravates the hormonal symptoms, then I turn to a chaffle. But, you know, listeners, you can, you can find out what works for you, like what solves the craving, but also doesn't get your insulin, you know, way high. Right. <clears throat> I do share some of my favorite recipes in, I know this isn't a recipe cookbook, but in Dirty Lazy Keto, Get Started Losing Weight. On page 168, if you have a copy, I have a whole section on just sugar um, cravings, fat, salt cravings. Because for me, it's not always the sugar. It's a lot of fried foods do it, you know? Yeah. That's like what I'm craving for. Yeah. So I, I put in some of my favorite recipes that can meet your needs during those types of cravings. Because I think they're normal. Yeah. It's right? Normal. And I don't think you should try to fight it. Just because you're feeling hormonal or menopausal yeah. or whatever the issue is. Yeah. If there's some kind of food that can meet that need and you can do it in a low carb way, yeah. do it. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Why fight it? Yeah. That section of your book is super helpful. Super helpful. And you might also cut out some junk food. That's another food tip. Um, well, I like junk food. I know. And Dirty Lazy Keto allows a certain <laughs> amount of processed food, right? Like I, I think it's fine, but yeah, I think you have I to do say, what's going to work more for your body. I would right? say if yeah, and I, exactly. And that's what, another tip is to pay attention to your body. Like sometimes the junk food or the processed food is totally fine if it's low sugar, right? And it's on your keto diet, go for it. But if you're keeping track of your cycles, like there's, um, I think Clue is the, the app I have that's super great for tracking your symptoms and your hormonal cycles. And sometimes you'll realize if you do that, you'll see, oh yeah, there's like a pattern, right? You'll see, oh my gosh, at certain times I crave salt, sugar, fat. Yes. And uh -huh. then maybe at those times, just lower down the processed food and then, and lower the sugar a little bit more maybe. And then when you get past that, you go right back up to your normal diet. So tracking your hormone cycles is a great, is a great idea too. That's actually. a great tip. Yeah. Well, that was all my question number one. Can you believe that? So my question number two, Tamara, okay. right, I want to talk, um, still talking about food, but I want to move into just the topic of fat. Yeah. So is there a special type of fat we should have? Yeah. I would say both. To have, or yeah. Talk to me a little bit more about that. I would say both the amount of fat and the type of fat. So, and you've probably seen this just in keto in general, some people will overdo the fat or underdo the fat because they can both make you feel bad just generally. But then when you're hormones are a bit out of whack sometimes it's too little oil or too much oil so you gotta again that's something to track and keep track of like are you eating enough oils and then let's say you're not and you're like okay i gotta get a little bit more because i tend to under eat fatty foods actually that's just my 80s upbringing of fat is bad <laughs> so right i think I, everyone so, suffered from that leg yes. warmer like hangover where they think <laughs> oh my gosh i can't have any butter i know I still I still tend towards the big hair from the 80s. I can't help it. It's ingrained in me. <laughs> but anyway, okay. yeah. So if you know yourself and if you under eat fat, then bump up the fats and see if that helps. And the kinds of fat that you hear about that are best for keeping hormones regulated are essential fatty acids. And now, those are the... What would that be like? Can you give us yeah. some examples? So let's see. I wrote them down here. Flaxseed, 
flaxseed mm-hmm. oil. Walnuts are really good omega-3 fatty acid. Chia seeds, fatty fish like herring or salmon, um, those are all great things. The problem with those is that some of those aren't my favorite. And like I've tried flaxseed oil. It's a you don't pain. you don't like herring? No, <laughs> no, it stinks. Who eats that? Gross. That's disgusting. I, I, this is a problem with some of the expert yeah. advice that we read. And you and I are yes. big fans of taking the expert advice and then making it work for you, right? Yes. Like in a dirty, lazy way. Yes. So what if you don't like herring and some of those like oddball <laughs> or fish? Yeah. Then what do yeah. you do? Well, what I what I've done, it, and this is a kind of. It's not going to be a cheap solution, but there are eggs. They're called omega-3 eggs, and they're at every grocery store. They're a little, like a white kind of yeah. carton, a yeah. styrofoam carton. I think I've seen that. Well, it depends on the brand, but okay. yeah. And they're usually with the regular eggs, and then they'll say omega-3 really big on it. Mm-hmm. And what, what, what is with that is they feed the chickens chia seed and flax seed. That's so, just weird. Isn't that weird? <laughs> it's bizarre. It's like, but... Yeah, the imagine egg. these chickens are like, oh, hell no, this doesn't taste right. Hey, it's better than bugs. That's what they normally eat is oh, worms. Oh, gosh, I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> la, 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 No more. Don't tell me. I mean, but, the struggle is real trying to but, get these healthier fats in your diet. And it, it, eggs are mind, easy. Right? Like, who doesn't eat eggs? Like, for me, that know, was... Not everybody does. So that's my solution. It's a little bit more expensive, but I use those omega-3 eggs and it bumps up the really good healthy fat in my diet real easily. You know, I'm just teasing you, by the way. <laughs> this is me teasing you. No, it's chicken. great. Yeah. Do you, can you eat, do you eat any flaxseed or anything? You know, I do, Tamara, and I'm glad you brought it up because I also feel like some of these can be kind of boogery and gross when you cook them, right? So I'm going to be really upfront with it. And the first boogery is real appealing. Boogery <laughs> is the name of the recipe. So for those of you who have the first cookbook, I'm going to move to page 54. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that the, the recipe is called Booga Chia Cereal. Booga. Okay, I just went all in and told you the truth. When you make chia cereal or like the sawdust oatmeal, it doesn't necessarily taste or look maybe in a consistency that you might be used to. It's a little bit creepy. Um, but I know that the benefits of eating chia are good for me. Yeah. Same with flax. And so I do use them in my cooking and in my eating. And yeah. it does take a little bit getting used to. Yeah. But, but it, ta- it tastes great. Let, let, me, let me just read well, if you, These recipes taste really good, but they are kind of slimy and strange at first. It's like, well, you, you know it's good for you, so you just got to suck it up. Well, if you knew, if you think about oatmeal or those, the traditional yeah, that's hot cereals, too. they're, that's they're slimy and they're gross. They're totally weird. Yeah. See, I'm not that off base. I'm just telling the truth for one. Yeah. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it to people and try to tell them, you know, eating healthy is always, you know, like eating ice cream. It really bugs me when people say, well, I don't like vegetables or I don't like yeah. flax. It's like, no one does. No yeah. one. You know, we do these because we're grown ups, and at a certain point, yeah. you realize there are benefits to your health, and yeah. you're like, okay, you know, I'm I'm hormonal, or I'm you know having trouble with my weight, so I'm going to eat more vegetables, I'm going to eat more flaxseed, chia seeds, yeah. things that I know are good for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And try it because um, a lot of I've noticed on the Facebook group, our the Dirty Lazy Keto Facebook support group. A lot of people saying, oh, I miss oatmeal. And then it's like, oh, boom, try so this. Because it, it really is good. I know I'm joking yeah. around, um, yeah. but it, it's delicious. Yeah. And the trick is, in my opinion, with the flaxseed and with also chia seeds, you have to either use boiling water that'll soften uh, them immediately or refrigerate them overnight. Yeah. Soaked with a liquid. And make yeah. sure you add lots of sweetener too. Yeah. It's kind of like eating jam. Yeah. Yeah. Same boogery consistency. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I learned about it from the running community. Runners love that stuff. Yeah, it's running. packed full of fiber and yeah. healthiness. And it expands. It's like this yeah. weird glue that just goes. Yeah. <laughs> it's so super it good food. Stuff. That's what it, it is called a superfood for that it's reason. A super food. Yeah. And speaking of superfood, that was one of my next tips. <laughs> there are other superfoods besides chia. Yeah. Um, and this is number actually, three, right? This yes, is this our is hormonal number three. superfoods. Okay. Yes. Okay, here's the one. Writing here's the ones down. that I found. Number okay. one, avocados, dark leafy greens, salmon, the back to the fatty fish, pomegranates, turmeric, broccoli, and sweet potatoes. 
And what's great is that most of those, not all of them, but most of them are pretty darn keto friendly. Well, I'm writing down things from your list. Okay. I think I will write down avocados for me. Yeah. Green salmon and broccoli. Those for me are, you know, yeah. low sugar or low yeah. carbohydrate foods. The rest I, I'm going to have to pass on though. Yeah. Um, I probably turmeric. wouldn't sweet potatoes, but I, okay, here's what, here's my thing about turmeric. I don't know how to say it. And everyone <laughs> says it differently, Tamara. Yeah. It's, it's going to be like chaffle, a chaffle gate. <laughs> no, It'll I be probably... like turmeric gate. <laughs> how do you probably... say it? I say turmeric, but I'm probably saying it wrong. Don't, don't go by me. People drive me crazy and they're turmeric, turmeric. I know. Turmeric. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to embarrass myself, so I'm just not going to eat it. Okay, I'll, I'll embarrass myself. I'm just calling it turmeric. Listeners, just correct me. I don't care. We would like you to write in in the comment <laughs> section, please. Yeah. And let us know how do we say turmeric. And, and this is supposed to be really good for you. And yeah, it's you, a beautiful if, color. Yes, if you don't know what that is, it's a spice. I, don't, I don't know what plant it's used like an from. Indian cooking or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's super popular now because they've discovered it has all these great hormone balancing and other kinds of, you know, like, like cholesterol lowering. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, um I know Starbucks has um like a tea and a, a tea and a chai tea with turmeric in it. Um you can buy a lot of teas with it. Hot drink. Well, we should take our health advice from Starbucks. <laughs> That's where I get all mine. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm pretty sure it's universally known as a great superfood. And that yeah, is yeah. terrific advice that yeah. you're giving to our listeners. Yeah. And I'm so. a California girl. So avocados are my go-to. Like, honestly, breakfast, lunch, dinner. <laughs> Delicious. Yes. Well, so. Tamara, I, I'm going to force you to change the okay. topic away from food. Because okay. you and Let's I both know it. we could talk about that all day. But I bet you probably came up with some recommendations for activity. Because yes. you're always telling me that exercise is the cure for everything. It it's is. Unfortunately, it. like this is just yet another episode where we're like, exercise is life. Damn it. <laughs> However, this is Damn slightly, it. here's a slightly different twist that we haven't said yet. Too much exercise can throw your hormones off too. Yes. So you have to be careful not to do too little. But don't over overdo it. And by over overdo it, usually it's more elite athletes or. Uh, I don't think this has ever been one of my problems. <laughs> Me either. I'm never like, oh, I'm exercising. I better slow it down. <laughs> but maybe Get that there's trip some... to the refrigerator and back from the couch that put me over the edge. Yes. <laughs> well, if you're a, one of those elite athletes or like super marathoners who overdo it, overtrain, you'll know you're overdoing it because you'll stop having a period. Right. And, and that's, if that's happening to you, that's a really bad thing. So, mm -hmm. and it, that just shows you it involves your hormones when you exercise, but too much can cause you to um, get too low hormones and that can cause actually permanent damage. So be really careful mm -hmm. with that. But for most of us, it's, we need to up our- <laughs> Well, you heard it first on the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast. Yeah. Slow down yeah. with the exercise. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Well, yeah. moving on, Tamara, let's uh, transition away okay. from- Okay. Uh, we did food. We did um, exercise. exercise. Can we move on to mental health? Yes. I'm curious, you know, what your opinion is about stress and how that yeah. might affect our horm hormones, or yes. maybe that's a wife's tale. I don't know. It's, it's both. It, our hormones- I mean, our stress affects our hormones and our hormones affect our stress levels and how we fair. deal with, I know, I know. So the key is, is work on staying, you know, keeping your anxiety down, keeping your stress down. And that will, again, it, it may not, it's not going to cure a hormonal problem, but it will keep the symptoms from flaring high. Like anxiety makes things 20 times. I mean, I'll just tell a quick story was I, I was chair of my department, which was a super, super stressful three years. And during those three years, I had the worst hormone issues of my life. And the minute I quit, my hormones just calmed down. Everything calmed way down. And it was clear to me that stress was just aggravating everything. And how do we reduce stress? Well, I mean, we've done a bunch of episodes, right? On this, it comes up a lot. I could still use a little more help. I know. <laughs> I would say my two favorite are say no. Say no. Just to say no. I'm bad. Nancy Reagan says, yeah. just say no. Yeah, I should have said no to that chair position. <laughs> and then also just breathing, being present. That That would be my two. But again, go back to some of our old episodes and you can get even more advice about that. Well, that is 
Terrific advice. I hear that. Well, moving on, let's go to number six. What about if our listeners are just really struggling with this topic, they're continuing to suffer with hormonal issues, menopause, whatnot. Tamara, should they just Google everything and go with that? (laughs) Well, (laughs) just be careful. Like I I do this. Do you? I don't know. I do this constantly. I will sit in my parking lot with my medical results in front of me, my blood results, and I will pretend to be a doctor and Google everything (laughs) and I won't leave the doctor's office. And I'm like, in the car, reading yeah. it on the phone. That's yeah, not or helpful. before the doctor. I mean, because you get, and it freaks you out even more. Totally. I'm see- like, I'm dying. Look at my <laughs> test results. One item is out of whack. I know. Yeah, it's terrible. It's no. very, very, yeah, irresponsible of me not to partner with my healthcare provider. Right. right? And yes. And if friends, you can over rely on friends too, but because your friends experience. Yeah, I'll call you and be like, Tamara, am I dying? And you're and like, like, no. And then we'll feed each <laughs> Eat off of each other's frenzy. It's just we it's, have to ask the yeah. doctor, right? Yes, and yeah. this one I'm terrible at. Um, Me too. I, Let's be honest. You know, uh, just to, uh, not to get too personal, but you know, I struggled a lot, especially over those three years with this crazy, you know, perimenopause horror. <laughs> without getting into detail and I resisted going to the doctor and I resist because I was so I was like he's gonna prescribe a medication I I don't I want to do this naturally I don't want to get on these prescriptions and I resisted I resisted and that's totally fine and if that's you know if you want to look at more natural solutions more power to you but I didn't even talk to him about it and so finally after suffering I went in and I like look I'm just dying here And, and he said look here's your options, give them a try. And he gave me a bunch of range of options. And I tried like the least amount and that didn't work. And and I finally found an option that, that he helped me get that actually made my life 20 times better. And I remember like kicking myself going, why didn't I go in sooner? He's not the enemy. I don't have to do any, if he suggests something, I don't have to do it. But good point. Yeah, I would say just go in there because sometimes there's hidden things like you know, they'll do a blood test and they'll see your, your thyroid's off or you have some, you know, adrenal issue or there's all kinds of stuff that hit lurking mm-hmm. that only a doctor could notice. So go in. Not me in my parking lot with my iPhone. <laughs> no, oh. no, Stephanie, no. <laughs> well, at least you're in the parking lot. That is on the flip side, a lot of us, um, or a lot of women, they may just suffer and think this is natural. It's part of yeah. the time I'm in. Yeah. And by not partnering with your doctor, you know, you might be avoiding discovering something that's life-threatening or yes. very serious. It could be, yes. you know, something way beyond yes. menopause where it's something that threatens your life. And I had yes. that personal experience where I was just trying to ignore stuff like, oh, it's normal. I'm getting older, yeah. but maybe yeah. it's not. So no. yeah, that's our advice is partner with your doctor. Yeah. Just to, just to check <clears throat> you out. And then, you know, like I said, you can always not take the advice, but mm-hmm. be informed, be informed, not just need- by the internet. <laughs> no. Not the internet. And if you need more advice about how to be a a bad patient, that's what we call like a mouthy, assertive patient, listen to episode eight from season two. That that's a great help. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm curious listeners, what have you found to help keep your hormones in balance? We'd love to hear from you at Stephanie at dirtylazyketo.com or via Facebook or Instagram at dirtylazyketo. Before we get to our final hacks, let's take our final break. Well, today's second ad I'd like to share with you that it's sponsored by the Dirty Lazy Keto Premium Support Group that's on Facebook. It's a boutique weight loss support group for women only. And I developed this as a safe place for ladies only to learn about Dirty Lazy Keto without fear of bullies or keto police or spammers or even people that aren't just serious. So I run a live question and answer class once a week with the premium group and I give away um, giveaways and prizes. And I also give them access to a 30 day dirty, lazy keto boot camp. So just wanted to tell everybody about this because I talked about it a little bit last week, but without many details. Um, But if you're interested, it is a subscription based uh, group. It's offered through Facebook. They do the whole thing. It's $4.99 a month. You can learn more at facebook.com forward slash dirty, lazy keto and select the group Dirty Lazy Keto Premium Support Group by Stephanie Laska for women only. And there's no commitment. You can pop in, join for a month, quit. It's just something else I do for women who need a little bit more one-on-one support. Thanks, Stephanie. And I've been on it and it's worth every penny. It's great support. 
Okay, so we need to wrap up by sharing our personal favorite hacks. I know I've been doing all the talking, but do you have any uh, personal hacks, Stephanie? Sure, I'm always one to share. <laughs> uh, but something that really surprised me while losing 140 pounds, Tamara, was how much losing weight affected my thyroid and my hormone levels. I didn't expect that. So instead of waiting for a yearly physical, I needed to have my blood work checked more often to make adjustments to the medications that were, I was taking. So my hack for our listeners is to schedule your lab appointments online instead of walking into the lab and waiting all yes. day. It's yeah. so easy to make an appointment online and you breeze past this huge waiting room full of people and you can kind of laugh at them. Yes. And then you don't get like, their, ha, ha. Yeah, then, then you don't get their cooties. <laughs> you don't get their cooties. And you know, it takes away one of the obstacles to yeah. going because I hate yeah. getting blood work. So if I have an appointment, it makes me feel committed and then I'm yeah. much more likely to see it through because I know it won't take that long. Yeah. Great advice. Well, my hack is a little boring <laughs> and it's one that we've said like a zillion times, which is to hydrate. <laughs> I mean, we, we talked about hydration for dealing with stress, for having good poop, <laughs> for everything. Um, and so it's the same with hormones. You know, in fact, hormones actually regulate your thirst. So if your hormones are wacky, you're going to feel extra thirsty or not thirsty enough. So the best thing to do is just drink, drink, drink lots of water um, and stay hydrated. And that way your, your hormones don't have to work as hard. They can do other things. So you're just making it again, that much easier on your system. Well, the big message that we want our listeners to walk away with or listen away with <laughs> is that there's still just so much that we don't know about women's health, but I do think the research is getting better and better. Um, we don't want our listeners and viewers to suffer in silence Try out some of these dirty or lazy tricks uh, to change your food and activity to modify and also have an open dialogue with your healthcare provider to improve your quality of life because you are worth it. You are worth it. <laughs> and if you think this podcast is worth it and helpful to you, why don't you give us a good review? You can do it by going on your iPhone and select the purple podcast icon. And then you use the search tool and type in Dirty Lazy Girl, click on the thumbnail, open it, scroll down to ratings and reviews and collect on, uh, click on the stars. Hopefully you'll give us a five-star review. And then if you wanna leave a written comment, which we love to hear, um, click leave a review at the when you scroll down and then you type in re your review and hit okay. And I have one I can share real quick from <gasps> Apple Podcasts, which I love to share. Yeah. Um, this one was titled, Thank You, Yes, Ma'am. Five <laughs> stars. She says, I so appreciate you two doing this wonderful podcast. It certainly helps me to stay motivated and to try Dirty Lazy Keto since I can relate to, to everything because you are real and not judging. You obviously have overcome the same struggles I have struggled with for years. I just started. So, and that's from Lala Carr. Thank you, Lala. Wow. Thank you. See you next week. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you'll never miss a video, and we'll see you next week.